And good evening, everybody. This is Michael Filivera. I am with LogicalSignals.com and also TradersHuffingTraders.com. And this is the Elliott Wave update from the NASDAQ 100 for Thursday, September 9th, 2021. The market continues to move through what is going to be best labeled as a minute wave four correction. Um, we've got a little bit of an additional curveball today. And I had marked this level that we reached yesterday at uh, 15,523 as the completion point for wave four. And then was basically saying in yesterday's update that we needed to build on this and possibly could do a small wave too, but it needed to blast out in the start of the third wave. And the market did come down and we started to rally. Now this was all in uh, Globex, but when we opened, the market made a very solid move within that first hour up to session highs at 15,675, almost 76. And then it started to decline again. And then it broke below what would have been wave one of three and came all the way back down. And now is pretty much getting ready to, I would think, break below uh, 15,523.75, which is the previous law. So I've adjusted the labeling. And what it does is just really extends this fourth wave yet again. And so I've dropped by a degree. So these are sub sub minute degree waves here inside and brought the minute A, excuse me, the sub minute A of minute four. And I know this gets a little catchy because of the, all of this, the different levels that, that we're counting, but this would be A of wave four. Let's leave it there. And then this, being a perfect three wave structure would be wave B. And now it does appear that we are putting in five waves down and I'm gonna drop that to the 30 minutes so we can take a peek inside and see what that may look like. And of course my computer doesn't want to be cooperative. So let's try that again. Oh, it did, okay. So we have one, two and this looks like maybe one two and if it is this should really start to fly lower but it doesn't really do it and with so this is four one two three four then we're in the fifth and now i would expect that fifth wave to subdivide and uh by the way we do have a slight cap actually it didn't really show up in here as much as it did in the s p as the contract has rolled uh, on the toss platform, which is what I'm using here. And so it's now rolled from September to December. So there's going to be a little bit of price difference to where we closed in our uh, regular session and then reopened in Globex basis this uh, December contract. But I don't really see the gap like I did on the S&P. So in any case, if indeed, we you still have more to do, I would suspect that if this is a C wave, that it should come down and it should get below 15,523. Now, I'm just gonna pull this open. And the most common relationship for a C wave to an A wave is that they're equal in length. And that would fulfill the requirements in terms of what that C wave should do. It should put in a new low below the A wave, in this case, since it is down, and it would do that by if it were to reach the 100% level, which is where wave C would be equal in length to wave A, and that's at 15,490. And that does fit pretty well. Now, anything below this level, actually, as long as I can count down five, and if I'm already one, two, three, four, and maybe this is one with a little two, I don't know, we'll have to let the market unfold additionally and tell us, but we're just looking for a wave to take us down below 15,523. And as long as I can count to five, then I can count that as a completion point. And then we'd be looking for the startup. Now, that doesn't mean that, that, that as soon as we get below there, because you have to let the wave finish. And how it normally would announce itself is that being done, there should be a, a sharp, just almost like a V8 coming off of that low. 
as the selling is complete and the buyers just kind of swarm back in. And um, I, I would kind of expect it similar to this one. Now we got down there, we made a low and the buyers came right in to let you know, look, that's done. And then we proceeded. Now, it doesn't mean that we weren't gonna go back to it, but it did give us a pretty good inclination. And because where this completion would come in and what it does complete overall, I think it should be even a stronger rally. So whether that happens tomorrow, maybe we have to wait till Monday, it, it's up to the market, not up to me, because if it was up to me, we'd already be up at those new highs so we can move on. But we're not. So for tomorrow, I would expect initially, now this could happen again in Globex overnight, as often the lows do, or the highs can happen overnight, and then we don't get a chance to participate. So I'm not looking for a whole lot more. 44.90 is just 60, 60 NASDAQ points, which it can do in a heartbeat from current levels. So being that we did kind of have a pretty strong decline into the close that may carry over into Globex. And so we could get down there within Globex, if not, and possibly when Europe opens, it's still within Globex. But if not, then I would suspect that in the morning, that's we would start and get down into these levels. Now below all that, we have continued support at 15,446 and 15,418. Now I gotta bring this back up to my hourly chart because we have to revisit where does that no break zone exist? And here in the NASDAQ, that no break zone is at 15,397. So basically 15,400. That is where I think that this market absolutely has to kind of not break if we're keeping alive this minute fifth wave, which should take us up to additional new highs. If it starts to break below 15,397, even if it reached this and rallied, or reached this and rallied, it is going to change the count. It's breaking a rule that I, that, that I have always within my using Elliott Wave, it was a do not break this rule. And because if you do, you're just, you're going to be off from that point forward. What you're trying to track is going to be something different than what you're labeling. So a break below that level would, number one, give us a strong indication that the highs are in, regardless if it touches it and rallies. If it breaks it and comes down to 60 or comes down to 15,304, it's, it's going to break and negate the pattern. And then that's gonna suggest that the three's back over here and this is a five and we're done. And these were just all the correct starting corrective waves of an initial leg down. Now that's not what it looks like to me, but I have to include that because the NASDAQ and, and the markets can throw curveballs. Just when you're not really expecting it, it's like, boom, we're done and they on they go. And then I have to redo counts and that's fine. But this still really presents a strong bias towards corrective. Uh, because if this was the high that I'm looking for on the levels and the degrees that I'm looking for, remember, minor five to complete, minor five to complete, intermediate five to complete, primary five to complete, cycle five, those are pretty big high levels. That cycle level rally or advance has been in effect for 13 years. And if I go up on more to the super cycle level, that has been in effect for 90. And we'd have to go again and be basing a lot of our structure on uh, the, the S&P and, and the Dow Jones, which were the active markets back 90 years ago. NASDAQ wasn't even thought of then. So even within the NASDAQ, I believe that we're finishing a cycle five. And so that does suggest that where you have a cycle level correction to put in here, at least a cycle level correction. It's a cycle level A, cycle level B, cycle level C. And so as again, the kickoff should not be futzing around up at the high. And that's basically what we've been doing. Just kind of, well, we go up and then we got a next wave and we got, it should be a very clean one, two, three, four, five, boom, we're done. We're here, correction time. And we're not even close to that. Although, I mean, I, I could try as damned as I can to try to figure out how this could be a five-wave structure, 
and um, it just is not working out. So, but this is definitively a three wave, a, you know, three waves up. So that's why I'm saying A, a B, and now it does appear that we're getting that five waves down and that should complete minor, minute wave four. Now, again, what's going to announce that minute wave five is underway is on the hourly chart, <coughs> excuse me, a quick five waves up. That's what I'm going to be looking for. Um, or at least down on my 30 or 50 minute, I got to see this five wave structure clean and in place to give us a go, a green light that four is done, five is underway, and we should begin to move to new highs. So that's what I'm going to be looking for. So for tomorrow, again, Friday, it's a weekly expiration. It does tend to be slower. So we might get the moves that, we, that we're that we looking for down to support and maybe office support within that first hour and a half. Or it might even happen overnight in Globex. Because as, as once expiration comes into view, um, mar the markets tend to go because of the individual components to an area that has um, high volumes or open interest. So like say, for example, on Apple, the open interest might be pretty high in the 155s, 154, 155. <clears throat> so now you've got, you're gonna build an idea as to where that stock is likely gonna end up for expiration. Same thing for Amazon. So we can go back and we can review all that to try to put some weight around where the NASDAQ should kind of end up. But rather than do that, I'd rather just kind of go with the fact that we have X, uh, likely within the NASDAQ, the 100 or 102 stocks, they're all having a weekly expiration. And so there's a lot of play back and forth as positions are adjusted, entered, exited, et cetera, et cetera. And that could just produce a, a range brown uh, market for us that trade the future. So I'm not looking for a lot. I did see an increase in the volume today, but that was more to the downside than anything else. Uh, we always will see an increase uh, for downside activity versus upside activity. And so, I'm not looking for a whole lot, but I would like to see a decline down into that support at 15,490. I'd like it to be able to mark that as the end of the minute fourth wave and at least start to see the start of a minute fifth wave up. This is where I'm going to leave for today, and the next update will be on Sunday.